Okay, what do you want this time? Oh, just to remind you that you haven't done a recorded video in quite some time. Oh, come on. It's not been that long. It's only been... Oh. <laughs> Have fun with your new workload. God, I hate her so much. you little monsters, this little monster girl Desi coming at ya. And I'm really sorry how long it's taken me to, well, record another video. And this is partially due to both procrastination as well as more life stuff that seems to not want to leave me and my family alone for more than a week. But anyways, here's a topic that I've been wanting to cover for a while now. And as the title of the video states, today I'll be telling all of you about the very first job that I've had. I'm going to be talking about the time that I worked at the state fair. So, let's get started. I just want to start this off by saying that while I did have a babysitting job in the past, it didn't last very long and in the end, I didn't have the same feeling of fulfillment that I did when I worked at the state fair for a week. And I can honestly say that working at the state fair was the absolute most fun I've ever had. And I will be working at it again this year. Now, I'm gonna be honest, I was really on the fence about working there. Especially for a food vendor. As somebody who's grown up with parents that have worked pretty laboring jobs, like working at a glass factory, working on a construction site, and even working in fast food. So, I've often heard all the strifes that they've had with such jobs. Especially my dad, who has often complained about crazy customers he's gotten. So as somebody who really doesn't like confrontation and is really introverted, this honestly sounded like a nightmare. But as things have been for the last three years, I've had a really hard time trying to find a job. Which I'll cover in a different video. So this time, I was definitely determined to at least get one job this summer before it ended. So reluctantly, I went with my stepdad down to the fairgrounds to apply for the job. And I'ma just say that the lady who owned the stand, she was about as intimidating as my grandma Sandy. Now before you think that that means that she was a sweet old lady, you obviously don't know my grandma Sandy. And my grandma Sandy was a very scary lady. She was the concept of a mother bear personified. But a more accurate description is uh, the mom from the blind side. And while I was a bit scared of her at first, I did have some serious nostalgic vibes whenever I talked to her. Because again, she was a lot like my grandma, who had passed away that summer. So after filling out the paperwork and having a short interview, we were given a time to come in for orientation. And there isn't much to say about that other than she just explained how the job would work and what we were supposed to wear while going there. And it was official. I was working at a sweets booth on the scone table. And let me just say that the day before I was supposed to start work, I was honestly very, very anxious and excited, which made it kind of hard for me to sleep. But luckily I didn't have work until noon, so everything worked out for the first day. I learned the ropes on how to prepare the scones and what to do with them and all that, and I honestly had a lot of fun. It was fun talking to a lot of new people and the whole energy of the fair was just intoxicating. And the fact that I just had to work it within a pattern, it made my mind pretty at ease. I only had one job to do, and I managed to do it without fail. And of course my mom gave me some good advice telling me that it would be a good idea for me to keep busy. If there was nothing to do, then there was no point in just sitting around. Which is also a lesson that we learned in home economics as well as 
working afterwards in the cafeteria at school. So with previous knowledge and advice in mind, I just pretty much sweeped in between whenever we were supposed to be making scones and letting the whole hot box thing run out before we started on a new batch. Now what we called the hot box was just an oven that kept the extra scones warm before they were put out into view. And once it started emptying, that's when we would start on a new batch to put in. And the day pretty much went on like that the entire time. Because it was the first day, it wasn't extremely busy. But with all that was going on, I pretty much completely forgot that I was supposed to ask when I was supposed to go on my breaks as well as my lunch break. Luckily there were older women at the table that were working with me that reminded me to do so. And I'm honestly grateful for that because I probably would have worked the entire fair without remembering to take breaks or eat. And on top of that, for a few days straight I've actually worked a lot longer than we were originally supposed to. At most we were only required to work 8 hours a day and 45 hours all in total. But we were allowed to work more and it was encouraged to do so considering how busy it can get at food stalls. And on the first day, I actually worked until 12 o'clock in the morning to 12 at night. All the way up until closing and even helping to clean afterwards. And I'ma just say that my feet were absolutely killing me afterwards. It honestly takes a lot more energy to sit still or stand still for hours at a time than it does walking around or sitting. So when I say my feet were killing me, it literally felt like my feet had been stepped on multiple times by bulls. So when I got home the first night, I literally groaned so loud my mom thought I had hurt myself. But then I couldn't help but break out into a laughter. I don't know if I was laughing from the pain or laughing from the fact that I had been so afraid to take up a job like working at the fair for five years. And honestly, after the first day and after realizing how much fun I was having, despite the tiredness and the foot pain, the fun thing at working at a food stall is that in between breaks, at least for the stall I was working for, we were allowed all the free drinks we wanted because she wanted to keep us hydrated, and we were allowed to eat anything at that particular stall for free during our breaks or during lunchtime. Now this was only allowed so long as we didn't like grab a bunch of food and end up wasting it. And so long as we weren't eating on the job because Customers obviously don't want to see us putting the food that they might buy in our mouths. And if you worked until closing shift, you were allowed to take anything extra that was left over from the day home with you. Which I pretty much did every day since my mom really liked the scones. Even if I didn't end up working closing shift, I would just sneak a few out. Each day pretty much kept on going on as is. I would work at the scone booth. I would make the stones, I would sweep up in between and clean the utensils, and I would honestly enjoy each of it. Now because of my ADHD, I actually have a very hard time sitting still, which is something that has kept me from wanting to do office work despite the fact that I really love math, and which honestly made school really hard for me. So all this moving around and going back and forth while it would annoy some people, was actually a lot of fun for me. Because it meant that I was burning off energy, plus free drinks, and snacks. There was this one girl who I'll call Lila, who was honestly out of state for this job. And she was actually a lot younger than me. Though she only found this out when I told her that I was 22. Which really surprised her. And would surprise most people if they saw me in IRL because I have a very extreme baby face. While I can't say that I hated anybody who were at that stall, there was this one guy that was kind of assertive. He wasn't bad at what he was doing, he just kind of ended up accidentally rushing us one day. 
And because we were so busy trying to get stuff together and the scones made, we didn't realize until it was too late that he had overstuffed everything. And luckily we were able to sell all the scones that day without a ton of problems considering that we would end up losing the stall some profit because obviously if you keep food in a warmer for too long it's gonna taste a bit funky. But the next day was one that I had a lot of fun with because my older sister, her fiancé, and two friends decided to stop by the fair. And because I didn't get to see her a lot that summer, it was a ton of fun. During my lunch break, we all sat around and chatted and we walked around for a bit. But because I had been on my feet for a while and I had forgotten to switch out shoes, which by the way really helps when you're working at something like a fair, my foot actually began to cramp up as we were heading to look at the animals. So my sister's fiance had to pick me up and carry me on his back until my cramp subsided. Which was kind of embarrassing. Not as embarrassing as what happened on the last day, but we'll get to that. And after that, not much happened that day. During the fifth and sixth day, not much happened either. Well, I mean, on the sixth day, my mom's phone decided not to alert her when I texted her that I needed her to come and pick me up from the fair. And after waiting half an hour after closing for my mom to come and get me, I decided it would probably be best to walk home because I had originally thought that she had accidentally passed out while waiting for me to text her. And I've got to say that she was absolutely devastated that she thought that I might have thought that she was ignoring me. That was a sentence that probably didn't need to happen, but... But I told her it was alright and I understood that her phone was being stupid. And so the seventh day rolled around the next day. And that's when something a little surprising actually happened. It was around my lunch break that the boss walked up to me and told me that she was going to buy me my lunch. Because she was honestly surprised at my worth ethic. Because she was honestly surprised at my worth ethic. <clears throat> because she was surprised at my work ethic. For the entire week that the fair had been going on, I had been the one that was the most hardest worker. The moment there was any pause in between making the scones, I was the one that was sweeping up everywhere, cleaning off the table, cleaning the utensils, and all of that without needing to be asked. And that honestly made me really happy to hear. For a long time, I had always been really worried that I would end up screwing up during work. And I don't just mean at the fair, I just mean in general. But I tend to have a home attitude and, I guess, a social attitude. With people I'm comfortable around, like people at home, I tend to be a bit snippy, sarcastic, and whiny. But with people I barely know and in an environment I've never been in, I tend to be a lot more reserved and quiet. Which is something I only learned until after I started working. So that day during lunch, I enjoyed the most delicious chicken strips I had ever had that summer. And I honestly think they tasted better because it felt like I had earned them. That was also the time that I realized I didn't need to be just eating scones during my break. Because initially my tired mind during orientation kind of uh, took it that we would only be eating what we were working on. But when she had said that we would only be able to eat what was being made or what we would make, she pretty much meant just grabbing something that was uh, not specially ordered by somebody else. So after I was done eating, I enjoyed a cold swirl of ice cream, which I realized I could have been eating the entire time I was at the fair. So pretty much the rest of the days I was... Uh, pigging out on snacks during my breaks and lunch time. Oh, one thing I forgot to mention about the fifth day. My dad actually took a break from helping out my uncle to come down to the fair to drop off a lunch I had asked him to make for me. 
which I really enjoyed because I really love the salmon my dad makes me. And he told me how proud he was of me that I had gotten a job, especially a job that he has been telling me about for a long time. Since working at a fair was one of the first jobs that he took when he was younger. And I might just say that the last two days of the fair are the absolute busiest. And it didn't help that three people actually ducked out without saying anything to the boss. So when the run- so when the whole meal rushes came in, we were three people down and we were booking it to get everything made. And it was actually during the last two days that I started helping out wherever I could. The scones were relatively easy to make and pack. So in between sweeping to make sure nobody slipped on the crumbs that fell on the ground, I did things like get people their drinks that they ordered or ice cream or putting toppings on funnel cake. Though when one person told me that they needed help ordering their food, I got really anxious because I don't know how to work a cash register and for a second I kind of stared at her like a deer in headlights before having to grab somebody who did know how to use the cash register. Though the most mind-wrenching part of those last two days was that on the seventh day, during the night when everything was most busiest, the owner actually ended up falling down. Now she didn't really get hurt, but that honestly scared everybody who had seen it. Me especially because I had actually seen one of my grandmas fall down and hurt herself once. But luckily she was okay, she was just dehydrated. And finally the last day. On the last day I was really sad because during the whole time that I was working at the fair I was honestly wishing that it wouldn't end. Yes, the work was tiring and it hurt to be on my feet all the time, but at the same time, I didn't want it to end because I was having so much fun. There were people to talk to, there were things to do, and there was a lot of yummy snacks to eat. The whole energy of the fair just... It was just wonderful. Though, on the last day of the fair, I had actually gotten sleep drunk. Now, if you don't know what sleep drunk is, it's pretty much when you're so tired, your body starts acting like it's drunk. And the worst part is, most of the time, you'll be completely aware of what you're doing, but at the same time, not able to stop it. And I actually fell down, not once, but twice in a row. And I don't mean like slipping on something, but more like I had just ended up plopping down and sitting. I got up right away and luckily nobody was uh, worried that I was going to hurt myself. But eventually I was able to get enough control to decide, hey, I should probably clock out before I freaking hurt myself. So that's what I did. Then I texted my mom saying that I had gotten off work and that I need her to come and get me. And I quickly snuck out three bags of scones for my mom, my stepdad, and my little sister. And that was the end of the first time I had ever worked at the fair. So yeah, I guess the moral of the story is try new things and they might turn out for the better. And one thing I left out in the story is that it's now a running joke that as a kid I couldn't wait for summer, but now I can't wait for summer to end. That way I can start working at the fair again. So if you guys have any good, bad, or monstrous first job stories, leave them down in a comment below. And if you guys want to see more videos with opening skits, or you just want to see me and Sapphire interacting more, give this video a claws up. And make sure to subscribe if you're not already. The little monster community is always looking for new members. And with all that said, watch out for the monsters under the bed, and I'll see all you jelly beans in the next video. Bye!